Next, I want to talk about using border images. So in CSS, we can define what images we want to use to create the borders. Instead of defining a solid style, a dotted or a dashed style with a certain color, we can actually use images. So I've borrowed from the uh, Mozilla Developer Network site one of the images that they're using in their demonstrations because it's just a really good image for this purpose. We have a 90 by 90 pixel image here. Each one of these diamonds is, 90 is uh, 30 pixels across and 30 pixels tall. And we're going to be using this and cutting it up and then using it for the borders and also for the background fill on a bunch of paragraphs. So you can see here, I've got a bunch of different versions of it. We're going to go through all of these. So what are the properties that we have with border image? There is, of course, the border image property, which is the shorthand for all of these other properties. So in order, this would be the order that you would write all the values if you were using the shorthand. The first one is border image source. So as you would expect, you have an option for URL where you say, this is the image that I want to load. So I'm going to be using this one for my URL. But we can also use linear gradient for a single gradient or repeating linear gradient if you wanted a pattern within that border space. The next property, border image slice. With this one, we're slicing pieces off of this image. We can provide one value, and then it's used for all four sides, or we can use four different values, or two values, or three values, just like you would for padding, margin, and border. Now, slice, we're saying, if I said 30, would mean that I'm going to take the top 30 pixels here, and this is what I'm going to use in my border is the top 30 pixels. And then I can do same thing for the right, same thing for the bottom, same thing from the left. So it's measuring in 30 pixels from that side. That's how much of this image I want to use. Next is the image width. And that is, okay, I've taken a piece of this that I'm going to use here. How big do I want to display it? So maybe I take 30 pixels, so I get a full diamond, but I want to display it as 40 pixels large. So let's come into that first one right here and see if we change that. So I have my border image source pointing to this image. My slice is 30. So I've got the top 30, the right 30, the bottom 30, the left 30. The repeat I'll come back to in a minute. Outset I'll come back to in a minute. But I want to add in here the border image width. That's the one property we didn't have here. So for this, I'm going to say 60 pixels. There, you can see I took the 30 pixels off the top and I expanded it to fill this amount of space. Now this property is different than border width. Border width, basically you're creating a space and on top of that space, you're gonna be putting this image. So I had 30 pixels here where I could display the image, but I created an image that was 60 pixels tall. So I've taken that 30 plus I've cut into my padding we have the image outset. This is, if you imagine a single line that goes all the way around the paragraph here, and that's where a one pixel border would go. The outset means how far outside of that area do I want to make this thing fit? So if I said 60 pixels, there we go. I'm taking where that border image is and I'm pushing it out by 60 pixels from where that one pixel line would be. If I do 30 pixels, it's going to be half that distance. 10, bring it in even closer, and then zero. I'm back into here, and I had one pixel, or sorry, one REM, 30 pixels worth of padding on the top, bottom, left, and right. And you can see that I'm cutting into that 30 pixels right here. My 60 cuts into that. All right, so that's outset. Moving this around, width is how big I want to make this, how thick I want to make this image border. Slice is how much I take from this image. Source, the image that we're loading. And then one other thing with slice is that we can come in here and we can say fill. We can add the fill property so that it takes the inner part of the image beyond whatever the slice is, and it tiles that in behind here as well. Now image repeat, we have a bunch of different values. The default, stretch, if 
I spell it correctly, there we go. Stretch will take that top 30, the right, the bottom, all those 30, and then it stretches the in-between spaces. So in this middle, in this middle, in this middle, in this middle, and then underneath all the content, it's going to stretch as little of that as it can across the rest of that space. Repeat will keep whatever size I've defined, which is my 60 pixels, and it will tile at that size. But I do end up with things like this. If I don't have something that's measured exactly, I will end up cutting into my pattern. So to solve that problem, there's two possible values, round and space. Round will scale these little pieces that are being tiled so that they fit perfectly. And space will create spaces or little gaps between them. So let's take a look at that. If we change this to round, there. Now it's perfectly fitting in there because it's been scaled. And space, there we go. It kept it at its original size and just scaled it as closely as possible to its original size so that it would fit inside of there. Now the other ones that I've got here, just some other variations. This second one, I'm doing the same sort of thing I did for the first, but I'm using the shorthand property, border image. We've got the image first, then the slice, and I have said fill, the fill goes with the slice. Now I've got two slashes here, two forward slashes. Since these three values in the middle, slice with an outset, those are all numeric values. The browser's not gonna know what you meant. Like if I didn't put all five properties, if I put the source at the beginning, I put the repeat at the end, and then I had one number, which of these numbers is it going to be? So in order to know that, it assumes that if you only put one, it's going to be slice. Beyond that, we have to start putting these forward slashes between them. This is my slice, this is my width, and this is my outset. So that's the order that these will be interpreted as. Okay. So the next one here, um, just same sort of thing. I'm doing the repeat so you can see that it doesn't quite tile properly. Uh, the next one here, that's with the stretch and showing you different um, numbers of values for the slice property. 30 is gonna be my top value. So I took 30 pixels of my original image. I took the top 30 pixels that's this pit at the top, those three diamonds. And with 30, I'm scaling it to whatever size I want. I can make this 60, I can make it 80, I can make it whatever. But of the original image, I'm taking 30 pixels. Then on the right-hand side, I'm taking 10 pixels measured in from the right-hand side. I'm taking 10 of the 30. Same thing on this side, 10 of the 30. So that's my two tens here. And then on the bottom, I'm taking 20. So this is, you can see, it's about two thirds of that diamond at the bottom. And that's how those four numbers work. Top, right, bottom, left. How far you're measuring in from each of the sides of the image to get this effect. We can still do things like change what we're doing here, but you can get some very strange effects if you uh, mess around with this a little bit. There's repeat. So when you start changing the numbers and playing with the other properties, you can get some sometimes very interesting effects, sometimes very ugly effects. I encourage you to play around with this. I'm going to take all this code and leave it as a code gist in the, the uh, description for the video. So you can download that. You can play with all these properties and experiment with them. That's really the best way to become familiar with this and understand how it works. All right, number six, that's this one with the tiny little diamonds. So my border width, I've got 10 pixels. That's how much space that I provided here for the border. And my image slice, 30. So I took the 30 all the way around and then used space. So there's little gaps in between here. Border image width, I could add that. There we go. So border width 10. If I don't specify border image width, it will match this. So it's going to be the same value as this. This is how much space was left for the image to be displayed. 
but I'm exceeding that by setting border image width to 60. I'm going outside of that little 10 pixel space that I had. Now the last one here, here's an example using linear gradient. I'm going to stretch it. I'm going from gold to black. That's my full thing from here to here. That's all I'm doing. Alternatively, if you want to play around with this, here's a repeating gradient. At a 45 degree angle, I'm going from gold at the beginning, 10 pixels in, it's black, and then from black to gold, it's going to take the next 10, 60 pixels. So it's just this repeating pattern right here. All right, so I hope that helps you out. That gives you enough to get started with these. And as I said, experiment, experiment, experiment. That's the best way to get really get comfortable with all this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, Thanks for watching.